So you have this group of kids. They all come from different backgrounds, but they share a common trait in that they probably more often than not come from somewhat of a troubled family life, uh, varying levels of emotional trauma, and they start committing some small crimes, maybe low-level felony stuff, and you have to rehabilitate them. What do you do? Well, you traumatize them more, of course. So if you grew up as a 90s kid like I did, you probably remember the late 90s documentary called Scared Straight that aired on MTV uncensored, which was big news at the time. And this documentary took a group of juvenile delinquents and it put them in this intervention program that brought them into a prison and had all the guys hooting and hollering and screaming at them to try this, to basically try to scare them out of doing anything that would eventually land them in prison. And when you run into a motherfucker like me, I'm gonna crush you, son. That's right. I'm gonna crush you. That's Trust me, right. you right. faggot motherfucker. You apologize to somebody else. Yeah. Kiss my ass, motherfucker. Yeah. Step your punk ass back out here. You come in this motherfucker around a bunch of miserable motherfuckers that ain't never had no contact with a woman in over 20 motherfucking years. Who do you think is the next best thing to a woman in this motherfucker? He's got him. He's got him on a pocket leash. Oh my God! Now, when I I remember watching this at the time, it was crazy because it was one of the first things they aired. Not for, but it, they aired it uncensored on television, I believe, which was a big deal. And when I was a, you know, I was still a teenager at the time, it felt like I was indulging in something very sinful to hear all of this vile language. Wouldn't phase me today, of course. Uh, and at the time, I didn't know this, but this was a like kind of a, a 20 year anniversary from the original Scared Straight documentary that aired in 1978. Are you ready to kill somebody? You ready to do that monkey business you're doing on the street though, aren't you? You ready to hang out on the corner though, aren't you? Yeah. Then you better be ready to... <laughs> it's like they basically took a bunch of convicts that are doing life for murder and some other crazy shit, told them to watch a Tony Robbins seminar, and then were like, hey, we're bringing in a bunch of troubled teenagers. Can you deliver a motivational speech? Now, this 1978 original was a hit. The director won a bunch of awards. They did a follow-up like a year or two later, and then they did a 10-year anniversary one in 90, and in 99, they did the MTV one, which is the one I was familiar with when I was a kid. So I'm never getting in trouble again because I'm not coming back here. Going inside was enough. Knock some sense into me. So the formula is always the same. They bust these kids in, the convicts spend a bunch of time berating them, and it kind of gets progressively worse throughout the decades, the shit that they say. And then at the end, they interview them and are like, hey kids, what did you learn? Do you think you've learned something? And they're like, yeah, man, I know, I'm not, I don't want to go to jail. I'm definitely not going to fuck up again. The problem is, throughout the years, there's been a ton of research and a lot of control groups and studies conducted that show that this kind of intervention does not work to prevent kids, juveniles, from preventing future crime. In fact, it seems to have the opposite effect. Who you thinking from? Who you took something from, boy? Look at me. You see this motherfucking face? You remember this motherfucking face? But you never want to meet a motherfucker like me. You understand? That's I know this may come as a surprise, but when you take kids that have probably experienced a lot of emotional trauma in their life, so they've acted out, and then you try to fix them by exposing them to further trauma, it doesn't always work. I don't know why. If it was up to me, I would have just sprinkled a little bit of Peter Popov's holy water on him, called it a fucking day, but that wouldn't make for uh, such quality television. So despite the overwhelming evidence based on decades of research in control groups and studies done on this kind of intervention showing that they do not work, in fact, they can be detrimental to these young individuals, uh, they still go on all over the country, apparently. That's why in 2011, Disney-owned network A&E was like, hey, why don't we make another fucking scared straight? Well, let's not waste our time with this puny little update documentary. Let's milk this bitch for all it's worth and turn it into a series that goes on for nine fucking seasons all the way through 2015 until eventually I think they were petitioned to shut down because we were finally like, all right, you guys have made enough money off these poor, helpless, sad bastards. Uh, let's fucking wrap it up, please. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of just keeps getting more aggressive uh, and worse for these kids. But listen, when there's money to be made, I mean, this debuted as the number one show in A&E's history. And Disney's like, yo, we don't give a fuck about these kids. We're printing money, baby! So let's take a closer look at the most recent iteration of this abomination of a show. But before we do that, let's chat briefly about a company that's not in the business of terrorizing teenagers. And that is, of course, today's video sponsor, Raycon. Yes, that's right. We stay sponsored by Raycon because they continue to disrupt the industry with wireless earbuds that are practical, affordable, 
and stylish. Celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Melissa Etheridge love them. I love them. Hell, even your mom's boyfriend loves them because they come in a variety of fit options and colors. They sound great and they're half the price of other premium brands. They're the perfect companion for all your hobbies. So whether you're working out or shoveling pig shit at your father's farm, Raycon makes it fun to listen to your favorite podcast or new Celine Dion album. I run with them, I lounge with them, I poop with them, because listen, with six hours of playtime, an impressive bass response, and seamless Bluetooth pairing, they're the perfect choice for keeping my brain stimulated with information and grooves, baby. Raycon also prioritizes the customer experience from the design, the pricing structure, to the 45-day free return policy. You can be confident in your purchasing decision. As you may know already, you can get 15% off your very own pair by using my link in the description down below. That's buyraycon.com slash leonlush. Thank you guys for supporting the channel and thank you Raycon for supporting YouTubers we love. Appreciate you. Time for the big dogs now, fellas. Time for the big dogs. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? I heard you putting your hands on your grandmama, man. They call me Hustle Man because I ain't afraid to put in work. If these kids come in here and don't get their mind right, I'ma get it right for them. Looks like Hustle Man's certainly living up to that reputation, at least in the weight room. Damn, boy, he fit! You think you tough, huh? You want them tough <laughs> gonna put hands on women? Put your hands on me then, player! Show me how tough you is! Sit your ass down, man. I think even with the handcuffs and the ankle cuffs, fuck it, you could probably put a blindfold on the Hustle Man He'd still turn Jeremy into a thimble full of dust if he stepped to him. Evidently it is. You up in here? He represents the hood. You represent the hood. Oh, what you who just clarified that? One of the P one of the POs? Uh, he represents the hood. I'm the big dog up in this man. You think you is? I run this just because these guards right here don't mean a damn thing. <laughs> King Kong ain't got shit on me! I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Training Day is one of Hustle Man's favorite cinemas. I'm the man up in this piece! You'll never see the light of day. Who the f you think you f***ing with? King Kong ain't got shit on me! You think it's a joke? Y'all think it's a game? What are you smiling for, man? What is you smiling for? <laughs> I was just you think I, Is it funny to you? Do I look like I'm a comedian to you? Do I look like I'm a comedian to you? <laughs> I mean, kinda. I would never say that to Hustle Man's face, but from the outside looking in, it is, it is kind of funny. Is this the type of life you want? Look at this. This is what I brush my teeth with. They don't give us a normal toothbrush for a reason, because we can make a shank out of. Hold up, no normal toothbrushes? Fuck this, I'm never smoking weed again. Just tagged his partner in. They call me Ice Mike, because I'm cold as ice. Want you to hold this for me. This Kool-Aid, we put this on bitches like you. What? Now take your finger, just do this to the bottom. All right, don't get me wrong. Hustle Man was intimidating, but Ice Mike's bringing out the Kool-Aid bit this early? Jesus, Mike. I done lost my mom up in this And my grandma. I ain't got no family. Man, I miss my mama. Oh, did you see the spit? Mama. Got him right in the, got him right in the eyebrow. Oh, another one. It's drizzling off. Oh God! Oh, here it is. Oh, oh God! Ah, look at. It. Ooh, that's a tough. That's like a 13 Gleeks in one. Wrecked him. Go on, swing. I beat the f out you. Wow. Make my day, bitch. Make it. Wow. Unball your fist while I smack the out of you. Unball your fist, man. Just a weird concept for me to try to help rehabilitate kids by sending them to prison and having inmates try and step to them and get them to fight. <laughs> I don't understand, like, hindsight, maybe not the best idea, but it made a shitload of money, that's for sure. Where your mom at? Paralyzed. <laughs> Curveball! The producers were probably like, uh, make sure you ask her where her mama's at, um, cause she's paralyzed, it's good television. She paralyzed and you taking advantage of her! <sighs> Your mama proud last sweetheart. Oh, now he's dropping a sweetheart. He had a little change of heart there. I think he feels bad for coming so hard. You shouldn't be out there jumping in cars, selling your body. If I knew you out there and saw you jump in the car, I would beat your ass and beat whoever ass that jumped that you're getting. If I was getting. <laughs>
What? <laughs> what was that? Beat your ass and beat whoever ass that jump that you getting. If I was getting out of her, so <laughs> and the hat trick that jump that you getting. Did jump get the get new? I'd beat his ass too. Um, I know. Eventually, I'm gonna see one of y'all in here again. It's gonna be you, homie. Oh, I'm gonna see you in here. Sorry, Jeremy. You, come, you got the long got straw, you. my friends. All right, fellas. Thank you. Head out that way. Ice Mike is emotionally drained right now. He just gave the performance of a lifetime. <laughs> Instant table clear. You cannot convince me that that wasn't a manufactured scene by the production team. 100%. That's fantastic. It's amazing that these interventions weren't successful in teaching these kids empathy and restraint. You would never uh, know why. I, it's weird. Think it's a joke? Think it's funny? Yeah. Why? Yeah! Yes. So here we have yeah, a different why? episode. You think it's a joke that you're going to jail today and spending the day with oh me and everybody else? Oh my God, God ain't gonna help you here! Oh no. Oh, Anthony. I mean, they could have gotten someone a little more intimidating. This guy seems a little bit... Ten ply. You're fucking ten ply, bud. I'm gonna be more in your face. Nice I don't give a crap. Hit, I don't care. I don't give a crap. What is the, they chose the guy that doesn't even swear to be intimidating? What's like what's the deal with that? What you gonna do when I punch your sister? What? You ain't gonna do nothing if you in here. You ain't gonna damn thing if you in here. You gotta take care. I ain't trying to make you mad, man. I'm trying to make you hear me. You gotta take care of your sister, man. Looks like they finally got the defiant one to cry. Mission accomplished by the show orchestrators. Night, night. Oh, yeah, they get to spend some time in a cell. Uh oh. I mean, those headbutts were 10 out of 10. Oh, no! Like, what? Obviously, of course, they go over rules, right? No physical contact, no touching, but you're really gonna trust inmates in a prison serving time for felonies, murder, maybe worse, to not lay hands on these kids who, as far as I know, haven't even been proven guilty in the court of law. I don't know the nature of their trials, but uh, what a liability that must have been. We're gonna give you the life. You wanna test me? Go ahead. Huh? No. Put your dukes up. Put your dukes up. They call me twin. If one of these kids wanna step up to me, I'm them up. I mean, that's it for me. No more driving 45 into 30. I'm not trying to have a run in with twin. Anyone who introduces themselves by saying they call me twin as opposed to, hi, my name is twin. That's you, you don't want to have to run into that person. What you gonna do when your grandma dies? She on her way up here right now. Boom, get hit by a car. Then what you gonna do, huh? I mean, probably you would grieve, like most people, if they lost a, a grandparent. Uh, I, I, your mama can't save you for me. Hey, so what you gonna do? What you gonna do when, when I sock your ass? What are not gonna do, huh? What are Seems like... <laughs> <laughs> they're doing the hold me back thing. I love it. Seems like mamas are really a central theme. It's all about like, you know, what's your mama gonna do? You disappointed your mama. Can't be disrespecting your grandmama. A lot of mama. How do we know that mama's not a shitty parent? I, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe the reason they're in here in the first place is because mama sucks too. Get her the fuck up in here, right? Let's not give mama all the credit in the world till we know the situation. What? <laughs> No. 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 I refuse to believe that that was also not a manufactured bit. That was too per like they watched Goonies and were like, "Yo, that's fucking fire. Let's do that." The reason half these kids are probably here is from lack of parenting at home or possibly traumatic home lives. So instead of sending them to this where we further that trauma, maybe we could give these kids an idea or an example, a mentor, a role model, someone that can uh, show them what it means to have empathy and patience and different qualities that, you know, uh, you would expect out of a, a good human being. But of course, that wouldn't make for as entertaining television. It would probably help the kids a lot more. 
But who cares about the kids if your company's not, you know, hemorrhaging money in the bottom line, just rolling in dough. I'm pretty sure these scared straight intervention programs still go on all over the country. I know the show got canceled. I know there's obviously a lot of disparagement and controversy around it, obviously, especially now, as there's been more research done on how kids respond to different types of disciplinary action. Obviously, spanking's off the table. I'm surprised that stuff like this still goes on, quite frankly. But I'm curious to know what you guys think about the show. A lot of you probably know what it is, because no matter what decade you were born in after the 70s, there was a Scared Straight documentary or a subsequent follow-up up until 2011 to 2015. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, it would mean the world if you'd subscribe. And if you could do me one last favor before you go, just head into your pantry and grab the Kool-Aid, rub a little bit on each one of your cheeks and let Ice Mike lick it off. And let that experience kind of reform uh, the moral fiber of your core so that for the next 20 years, you don't really do anything bad. And then eventually you relapse uh, morally and you commit a couple of class three felonies and finally get incarcerated. And when you're finally in jail, uh, and you're sitting there in your cell brushing your teeth to that shitty little toothbrush that's not even big enough to turn into a shank. You look at yourself in the mirror, you pull down your pants, and you hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. We'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.